Right now you're getting jiggy with thelaughingbureau.com. Get jiggy with it. So, first question. You know, you got your special coming up. A lot of comedians anticipate that special, and this is your first one. What's your thoughts going into that process or getting to this moment, and what does it mean overall for you? Uh, what does this special means a lot? I mean, you know, I, I've said this before. I think a lot of the last few years, people have kind of downplayed those half hour specials. And I remember this before I started comedy, watching these half hour specials and look at them like they was a big deal. Like that, it almost, for one, at one point, it's just being real, you know, because like I said, I've watched, I'm a real comedy head. You know what I mean? I've been watching this stuff, Comedy Central, uh, SNL, Living Color, Martin. Death Jam, Comic Deep, whatever comedy I've been watching since I was a kid. So um, I knew once, because this has always been my dream, once, one of my biggest goals was to get a half-hour special on Comedy Central. It, it really was. And uh, to, for me to get that really coming from the urban side of things, you know, when I say that to people, you know, I don't want to get it mixed up. Like, I ain't the first. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it is really tough for us to you know, to get mainstream specials like that without having to change ourselves or our material. And I had to do, I haven't done any of that. I've been myself the whole time. So just real grateful for getting this half hour. And to be honest with you, man, I think it's going, it's going to make more noise than, um, what most people probably think. You know, I, I remember walking on stage, it felt surreal at first. You know what I mean? It really did. It's like, well, I can't believe I'm in this moment. You know what I mean? But, um, I just remember going through my set and, and perform while performing, and you know, not like that, but kind of rocking it. Like, oh damn, am I about to make a classic? <laughs> you know, because I remember those classic half hour specials. You know what I mean? You know, um, you know, it's it's from Pablo Francisco. People forget Kevin Hart's first half hour was dope to me. You know what I mean? It really was. Um, Dane Cook, as much as everybody hate Dane Cook, Dane Cook. Man, he snapped on a half hour. And it, and it, it, it you know what I'm saying? It propelled him. It really did. You know what I mean? You look at it. It's so many cats. Nick Swartz had a great half hour special. Uh, uh, Patton Oswalt, Louis C.K., um, um, uh, Chelsea Handler. And the thing about it was, it wasn't that she was hysterical on that. You saw who she was, though. And, that's the big thing about this is I'm excited about being who I am, talking about my opinion and my view on different things, and just being myself. And I know that's what's, that what separated me um, while taping this. I mean, not to be like that. I mean, getting off stage and um, everybody, thank you for taping it because I know I brought a different voice and um, and energy to it this year. And I, I really believe it's going to, it's going to turn out way better than what Comedy Central thinks um, because they already know their they audience is going to be excited to see me. But what I'm excited about, which has been my master plan, is to make sure I bring an audience that don't even watch Comedy Central to Comedy Central that night to see me. So I'm excited about that. There's a big debate going on between online and stand-up comedians. Um, you've been in the game for a minute. I've also seen you do a little bit of online skits and virals. What's your whole opinion on that? Well, you know, with that, I'm a little back and forth about this online versus stand-up thing. I mean, because it's, 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 it's a dip. Like, I do respect what they've done online. Like you just said, I have had videos online. Like, the way I even book the Living Color really is because of my YouTube videos. If I never had all that content between VMO and YouTube, you know, you know, no telling the truth, I wouldn't have got most of the stuff I got. Um, but, you know, I love stand-up, though. You know, it's something about, you know, getting that that crowd approval right away. You know, that's still what separates us, man. We're not in the crib making a video and not really can't. You, it's, I'm not saying it's easier to do that, but it is easier to do that. It's easier to sit at home, make a video, put it out there, and then you know, kind of see who's going to think it's funny. And most likely the majority that see it's going to, it's going to, even if it's split, it's still, 
you don't know what the right away reaction is. You don't know because you got to think about it, when you go on on stage, it's more than just performing. You got nerves you go through. You got to <laughs> you got to deal with. You don't know what type of crowd it is. It's all types of stuff. So uh, one of the things I do respect about the online people is that, that you know what they what they created. You know a following, and you know that's what most of us want uh, is to have a following. And a lot of them did a great great job of creating that, you know, but it's a different generation too, you know. We we talk about a generation that don't have comic view, that don't have Def Comedy Jam. So they have to go online and watch their comedy. Young people is what make online people who they are. Point blank. And that's not really anybody's fault. That's the network's fault for not appealing to that eighteen to 34, especially urban crowd, because, uh, you know, that's where it's kind of taken to another level, and that's where the most controversy is, is urban online, uh, you know, comics versus, you know, the urban stuff. That's really the beef, you know, white people have been doing it forever, ain't nobody said nothing really. They kind of just been doing them and doing their thing, they ain't been a big deal, you know, but it's, it's, it's our thing, and it's also due to you know, I think sometimes the laziness of the business of people actually not going to look for talent anymore. I mean, one of the things I, I looked, I just read the Ebony issue recently with Kev on the cover, uh, which was great and dope because he's killing the game right now. Um, but, you know, I think they should have a separate section for when he was profiling um, the online successful comics and and kept it the every issue a straight a comedy issue. When they did last year, you saw really they had the best comedians in the game. And it's happening now again. You know, people can say whatever they want. I look at my last few years have been crazy. Point blank. It ain't made up. It ain't like I'm just it's been crazy. Okay, it ain't nothing I ain't taped, ain't done. I think sometimes it frustrates me. Like I can make a variety list. <laughs> And be like the only black dude on there, and then can't 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 get it to the Ebony Gotti issue with a special coming out, along with taping all the other stuff I'm doing. I'm doing another pilot that I'm a writer on and producer on. But come like who's doing? Like they're not doing their homework, and it ain't rocket science. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, you know, and that's why I'm I'm actually. You know, I, I, you know, spoken reasons is something I have a lot of respect for, actually. I really do. I think what he's done is it's a little different because he respects, the, he has more respect, um, not for just the game, but for people. And he's young and he says some bold things that you could tell he ain't a disrespectful person. Some of the other stuff these other cats are saying is kind of out of line. And, and, uh, I think very, it's a slap in the face. You know, I think I saw one interview with one cat said that, uh, <laughs> you know, they, they, they're not comedians and they did a video because they bored. Maybe more comedians should just do videos when they just bored and all this other stuff. Maybe you ain't a comedian, stop doing comedy stuff then. You know, if you're a rapper, be a rapper. But obviously, nobody took you serious, so you had to be a funny rapper and do comedy to even get somewhat success because you couldn't get success at what you actually picked. You know, ain't too many comedians who start out comedians and become a, a platinum selling rapper. <laughs> Never heard of that. I don't think Jay Z or Kanye was comedians first and then became a rapper. I, I, I've never heard of that happen. So, you know, hey, shoot me elbows. It is what it is, you know. And, you know, that, it, so it, it's, it's a lot going on, but the real is going to stand out, man. You know, you know, what, what the, what you, the, the online people have to realize the networks is finna now. They're jumping into this now. You know, the internet is where it's at now. So they're not going to just keep letting, you know, people who got, you know, they're not going to keep letting y'all just do your thing like that. They're about to control the game again. It's like how they control television. They're about to control the internet soon, too. You know, that's why YouTube, Gave those different channels out to uh, bigger people and networks and stuff like this. So if you ain't a part of that, it's gonna be even more. So it's, it's gonna be it's funny, man. You know, it's almost like disco in a way. It's like you know, it had its time, but at some point, it's gonna come to an end. I'm sorry. <laughs>